Okonkwo. Great to see you, Kenneth. It's my pleasure being here again. And really, really you appreciate your coming. Joining in. us. Really I appreciate, appreciate your coming in. You, you've been in court today. You've had a long day. Um, you've had meetings, but you made it. So we're we're very appreciative. Um, Thank you very much. Uh, let me start by asking you whether you accept that Bola Tinubu is now constitutionally the president of Nigeria. <laughs> Well, I accept that we are in court questioning the validity of that pronunciation and subject to the decision of the court. I will take a clue on how to answer that your question. Right, but let me ask you, let me put it another way. Has there been a swivel towards Bola Tinubu in the Labour Party, an acceptance of the fact that he is now president and that what needs to be done now, pending the outcome of the legal challenges in court, is for the Labour Party to become, in the interim, a constructive opposition party and perhaps come up with a new model for opposition in this country. I mean, shadow ministers, etc like you have it in the uk i mean i think you would make a great shadow attorney general for example i mean is, is that kind of thing possible or is the labor party too busy kind of tearing itself apart and wanting to tear other people apart well i want to tell you that we already have a very beautiful model which we placed before the nigerian people and which they accepted so we wouldn't need to have a new model. We have our model that we are going to implement at the appropriate time. You have seen the model which they promised you. They promised you renewed hope. But from the first day of inauguration, they gave you renewed hopelessness. So, but we promised Nigerians a new Niger that is free from the culture of impunity criminality, corruption, and illegality. And we are going to maintain our focus on that promise. And at the appropriate time, we will deliver. Well, let me, let me put it another way. Um, if, because obviously Mr. Tinubu is now the president of Nigeria. If he reaches out to P. Toby and the Labour Party, and we understand he has this canny ability to mobilize people to his side of the fence, what do you think ought to be the reaction of Mr. Toby and the Labour Party to such an overture? In law, you do not approbate and reprobate. You cannot be in court saying that this is an unconstitutional pronouncement, that a man who did not win an election is pronounced the winner and begin to talk about an alliance. It is an unholy alliance because you cannot be preaching this way and trying to accept another thing this way. That's the classical definition of being a hypocrite. And we are not that in labor. So we are consistently maintaining our stand subject to the pronouncement of the court. In that regard, I wonder what you make of the messages that he's pushed out so far and the optics of that in his inaugural speech. Um, were you inspired by it or were you depressed mm -hmm. by it? Mm -hmm. I was a bit scandalized by it because a statement was made to be an inaugural speech. And right there in the speech, you could see a man contradicting the exact thing he was saying. Well, I may not blame him. The statement was written for him. But his own utterances, which was not even in the text, ran exactly contrary, and contrary to exact thing he was saying. Meaning, he was simply being a mouthpiece to somebody who wrote something. I said it during campaign that I am not moved by anything documented because that may just be the work of some brilliant professors. I want to hear the candidates talk. I want them to be cross-examined. Let's hear what he will say. Now, let me move into why I said this. A man in his speech said, we shall consult and dialogue and never dictate. And Piam, he issued the first 
dictate of his regime for a subsidy is gone. Well, I don't mean to interrupt you, but to, because our job is to try and interpret things as accurately as possible. Proceed. If you interpret that, certainly the way that they are now explaining it, they're saying that he made a reference to the fact that subsidy is gone, but the reference was the fact that the previous government had only made allowance up till June in the budget. It wasn't him who did it. He was simply acknowledging that the subsidy is effectively gone. Would you concede that to him? No, I would not. The statement he made was in May. The subsidy was to go by June. In politics, one day is enough to do the miracle or the damage. But what is the essence of you saying in your inaugural speech that you are going to inflict more pains on the people? He said he was going to lead. Leadership is defined as the ability to influence people through inspiration, not intimidation or manipulation. That was a demonstration of arrogance of power, not humility of purpose. Now, when you are a leader, what is your purpose? Is it to inflict more pains on the people? No. And you have to be humble about it, especially when the problem emanated from the incompetence and dishonesty of leaders, not from the complicity of the people. Now, let me start by saying, so that you do not misinterpret me as ever supporting anything about oil fuel subsidy. If there is anything that irritates me to my bones, is the issue of subsidy. I wouldn't have voted for anybody who said he was going to maintain oil subsidy. And I'm very serious about that. What is the wisdom in, a, in an oil producing country paying more than seven point something trillion to foreign countries to refine your oil and send it back to you? You paying their shipping line, you building their refineries abroad. When you have your four refineries already built. So you support his move then? No, listen to me. Right. I am saying that I hate everything about oil subsidy. And I agree with anybody who says it's fraudulent, it's criminal, and has no business in the first place in the Nigerian economy.